On this episode, a cop out of a job after a 10-year-old boy was arrested and jailed after urinating behind his mom's car. Also, a Florida elementary school removed black students from the class. I'll tell you where and why. Crystal starts right now. Let's get into it. What's up, 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 listeners? Welcome to another episode of Crystal. I am your host, Mr. Mo. All right. Uh, let's get into the story right quick. All right, ladies and gentlemen, to all my listeners, I hope you are doing well. I am doing well. So I hope that you are doing well on this day. I hope that God is on this day. All right, let's get into some stories. Alright, right, this first story. Oh yeah, let's say what's up, Silent A. He's working uh the table today. So let's get into this first story. Alright, check this out. A cop out of a job after a ten year old boy was arrested in jail for urinating behind his mom's car in Mississippi. This is bugged out. Let me see. My son urinates behind my car all the time. Alright, maybe a ticket. But not in jail. I don't know. I I, I don't. I don't. Alright, let's be going to let our AI take over. And, uh, all right, AI goes out. Let's get into the show. A police officer is off the job following the arrest of a 10 year old boy for urinating in public. Authorities said the child was placed in custody and taken to jail after he relieved himself behind his mother's car in Mississippi. Latonia Eason took to Facebook on August 10. Posting a photo of her son sitting in the back ass Nadobia Police Department cruiser. The mother said she was inside an attorney's office seeking legal advice. When an officer entered and said he'd caught her son peeing behind her car in the parking lot. Eason said she asked her son. Quantivius. Why he did that. I was like. You knew better. You should have come and asked me if they had a restroom. The mother told WHBQ TV. The officer said he was going to issue a warning and considered the matter resolved. Eason said, but then more police arrived. She said, one of those officers said the child needed to go to jail. Eason said, I'm just speechless right now. Why would you arrest a 10-year-old kid, she told local reporters last week. The boy said he was frightened. I started crying a little bit. He said, I didn't know what was happening. On Monday, police chief Richard Chandler announced that one of the responding officers is no longer employed by the department and others at the scene face disciplinary actions. We will also have mandatory juvenile training department-wide, just as we do every year. He said, we appreciate the public's patience while we investigated this incident. We deeply value your trust and support, and we are dedicated to continually improving and learning from our mistakes. The chief concluded, last week, Chandler issued an initial statement on the arrest, saying mistakes had been made. It was an error in judgment for us to transport the child to the police station since the mother was present at that time as a reasonable alternative. The police chief said, Mistakes like this are a reminder in this profession as to the continual need for training and refreshers on the various topics that we encounter each day. Chandler said, The boy's mother said she is contemplating legal action against the department. Hey, shout out. All right, but first of all, Let's give an applause to the mother. And let's give another applause to uh, the chief. Alright, so let's give our dummy buzzer to the officer that was there. One more, because it was more than one. Alright. Now that we got that out of the way, let me give you my view my opinion on this. Okay, so, what this is, uh, this is a case of 
probably a melanin cake. They don't have a picture up here, but this is probably a cake of uh, grape. That's what I can think of. This is a case of grape. So if you wanted to offer to throw it at Kyle, please go to jail. While the other officers did not. Okay, so let's give a round of applause to the officers that did not think that this is uh, valid. <laughs> now let's give the old Debbie Bell to the officers that put him in the car. Ding, ding, ding. Yes, new and old. I'm using both of them. Both. I'm using both of them. Um, these officers, this is clearly uh, racist. Clearly racist. And shout out to the chief who disciplined these people and had them disciplined for arresting a 10 year old boy while his parent was present. There was no reason to arrest him, to arrest this boy just because he urinated behind um, a car. Now, this is the I say um, police, some officers, they do abuse their power. And I want to say the initial officer was weak. Weak. Because the initial officer wanted to issue a ticket. Just a ticket. This is what the initial officer wants to do. The initial officer wanted to just issue a ticket. That's what the initial officer wanted. The initial officer wanted to issue a ticket. It wasn't until the other officer came that they decided this child, this 10-year-old boy, this 10-year-old boy with melanin and pigmentation needed to go to jail. Why? No reason. Because... I mean, let's think about it, folks. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, it damn near everything. Everything. Probably a few of them. I don't know if Mississippi is one of them. I doubt if Mississippi is one of them. But, urination, okay? This urination itself is not a crime. It's a violation. Okay, now, in most states, if you don't know, you need to look it up. In most states, you do not need to go to jail for a violation. You only need to get a ticket. It's like speeding. Speeding is a violation, not a crime. It's a violation. It's a violation of speed. So, what do you do? You get a ticket. You don't go to jail. You get a ticket, then you get and in this situation, if anything, if they was going to go far, as far as they should have went, was a ticket, not arresting this young boy, frightening him, and then running him and putting him through the system. It was on full force. Completely, completely on full force. Um, these cops, they need to be, uh, in my opinion, they need to be, if the family chooses to do this, prosecuted, yes. Sued, yes. They need to. Because things like this, and black, and, why did I say that word? <sighs> in the melanin community, and Communities with human beings of darker skin that needs to stop. Just because your skin is darker, you're still a human being and you can still be treated as one. Your skin should not make any difference. But in this society, it does. And to me, we need to stop that. Um, I'm not even going to let it go. No, Ed, I'm not going to let it go. Okay, uh, 
I can't say it. I can't because if I say it, it can't go out. The other show is not a one. Okay, so we just need people. I said it once. I say it again. We need to do better. We need to do much, much better, much better, much. To the ten-year-old, I wish. I listen. I'm in New York. I'm not in Mississippi, but I'm in New York. State of New York. And I come on. I was too. I would, I would definitely, if there's a lawsuit to be uh, founded, my advice to that family is sue them. Sue them. Sue them. Because this is unconstitutional. This is just a consumer. So, yes, I would go, I would take it that far as the facility to do that. And that's my view, and that's my opinion on that. Uh, so. Alright folks, check it out. Um Yeah, I know how we do. We always get it, but some girls. Alright, check it out. So if you like the content and want to hear more of it, all the links and everything are right here on your screen. This specific episode will be uh posted on YouTube. You can check it out at Chris Fox eleven ninety on YouTube also. Um, check out our Facebook page where we can post up motivational, inspirational content to help, you know, get you through your day. You know, just to give you a little boost. Also, um, if you have something that you want to promote or anything like that, we have a spot for you right here on the show. If you would like to promote anything, any of your content on the show, we can work that out. We can do it. Um, you can DM me at Facebook, on Facebook, uh, through the Messenger, and uh, we'll work that out. Also, um, what else do we have? Oh, that was it. Okay, so, that's it. <laughs> Alright, so, let's get into the second story. Alright, folks, so the second story is about uh, a Florida elementary school uh, removed black students from class. Wow. Wow. Let's hear more about this. Okay, let's, let's let our AI take over. Um, hey, you hit that for me. This, this is a crazy story. Oh, yeah. That's the air button. Okay. You hit it mad late. Hey, you're supposed to hit it when we switch the second story. That's you supposed to hit it. Hit it mad late. Let's get into it, folks. Let's let AI take over. Let's get into it. Let's do it. Hit it, Ed. A school in Florida is under fire for allegedly targeting black students in an attempt to improve grades. On Friday, August 18th, black 4th and 5th grade students at Funnel Elementary in Flagger County. Florida were removed from their classes for an assembly aimed at cultivating better standardized test scores. But according to the Daytona Beach News Journal, these students were only pulled from their classes because of their race, not their grades, as confirmed by Flagler School spokesperson, Jason Wheeler. According to Wheeler, the presentation was facilitated by two black teachers, and an in-school suspension supervisor were among the attendees. Wheeler also confirmed that parents were not communicated about the assembly which raised eyebrows for some parents. They contact us at least three times a week, said Danielle Brown, a parent of a fourth grader at the school. This is the one time that they haven't. They could have sent something out before. They could have even sent something out after, but they never sent a text, a phone call, an email, nothing. Brown also said she believed this assembly was a form of segregation. My daughter is nine years old, and I feel like them doing all of this is just a huge step backwards in the wrong direction. During the presentation, students were told the problem was that African-American students had underperformed on standardized assessments over the past three years. Other areas of concern cited that 32% of the students were at a level 3 or higher for LA math when they are supposed to have at least 41% of their findings. 
The solution, imposed by the school was for each student to commit to earning at least a level 3 or higher on all standardized assessments. Additionally, the solution cited each student to make at least a 75% in all areas of their curriculum. The presentation concluded with the school's FAST challenge, which has many parents outraged. In the challenge, students are encouraged to match up against their peers to win a meal from McDonald's. I just feel like you are kind of setting her up to be in a situation to become a victim of bullying, said Brown. On Tuesday, August 22, Flagler Interim Superintendent Lashakia Moore addressed the controversy surrounding the assembly in a statement. While condemning actions to not include parents in the process, we want our parents and guardians to actively participate in their children's educational successes. Without informing them of this assembly or of the plans to raise these scores, our parents were not properly engaged. She added, however, sometimes, when you try to think outside the box, you forget why the box is there. She also committed to work with the school's principal, Danelle Evanson, to explore issues surrounding the presentation. That said, from this point forward, all of our schools will engage our parents, no matter what group or subgroup their children may be in, in our continued efforts to raise achievement among all students. All right, let's dig into this. It is apparent that uh, these students were removed because they were black. These students were targeted because they were black students. Okay, let's let's just make that very plain and simple that these students were targeted because they were black students and according to them it was the black students that was the least receiving the lowest grade. Now, I just want to say this. Um, I want to I want to say this. This is, I want to say this. This is an elementary And elementary These things, such things should only be discussed with the parents, not with the students. Half the students don't even know what the heck this, this, this person is even talking about as far as grades and stuff. They don't know the schedule. They don't know the scale of it. So you're saying that you're discussing these things with, with what? Teens and preteens? They don't know what's going on. And then you didn't even involve the family. It, it's the parents. And that, that. Uh, I'm sorry about that. Uh, we had some technical problems. Uh, yeah. So, um, sorry about that. Sorry about that. Um, what I was saying was, um, they didn't alert the parents. These are uh, schools that usually alert the parents, but the parents know what is going on. They did not alert the parents in no shape, form, or fashion. Did they alert the parents? Did they let them know what was going on? I'm sorry again. I'm sorry about the technical problems. So there might be some static in this, um, this episode again. I want to apologize about that. I'll do my best to um, edit out. Um, again, 
They didn't let the parents. They didn't let the parents know what was going on. Anything. They just took it upon them. So this year, and try at least try to educate kids on this system and what was going on. And nine times out of ten, these kids did not know what was going on. And do I think uh, these kids? And I'm pretty sure uh, a bunch of y'all think that thinking it. A bunch of my listeners, y'all think that. Should you remove your kids from that school? In my opinion, yes. You should remove your child from that. School. Okay. The job of a teacher is to educate. So if the students are doing bad. It's probably because you're not a good teacher. Or you're not doing what is needed to reach students. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I would question your teacher, your teacher more than the students. You know, there's a bunch of other things that I would like to say, but I don't want to get cut off. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, we don't want to get, <laughs> get cut off. <laughs> Uh, and this is, there's a lot of things that there's a lot of things that can be said in this situation and I would ask my uh, listeners and I would actually use your imagination on what you would do in this situation me I would remove my kids from the school immediately I would remove my kids from the school now some people might not think this is a racist thing but it is because what they did was they rounded up and, and if you listen, go back and listen to it. What they did was they rounded up the black students. There was no white students here. They rounded up the black students that they said had the lowest score in the school. So. This is about uh, me. It it has to deal with racism, but this is always about this is also about status of school. So this is about getting status. This is about getting up here in numbers, and they do this every year. These schools they go through this every year to see which is the best school. In whatever county or the state or whatever, they have these competitions every year, and this seems to be like one of those things that this principal was trying to win. You know, it just seems like that. I mean, I don't know. You tell me what you. You tell me what you. What do you think that this? Um, this teacher was trying to do. What do you think that the school was trying to do? You tell me what you think. Uh, hit that, uh, share that like. Alright. Also, uh, subscribe and leave a comment and tell me what you think. What do you think was happening in this situation? Like, honestly, what do you think was happening? In this I think this is a situation of a little bit of racism because this person had melanin and was a person of color. You know, they chose to um, teach them the way that they did. Because they said, oh, only the, the, the students of melanin is getting most force. Everybody else can get high. Sorry, 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 folks. I had to wire it. Again. Sorry about that static. Um, but as I was saying, it's like, you need to take all the uh, children of melanin and they're getting both for 
and it's still going on though, man. It's getting on the hot seat. I mean, think about it. Just think about it. Would you want your child to continue in this school? Y'all let me know in the comments. All right, listen, folks. I am so sorry about uh, the technical problem. There might be some static in this episode. If uh, I'm going to try to edit out as much as I can. You know, Ed, Ed is only... Yeah, Ed, your hair. You know. I know. Yeah, I know. Silent Ed. I don't know. But, you know, we'll do our best to try to get the static out. Uh, if we can't, again, I apologize for the static in this show. But, uh, that is my view and that is my point on this situation. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we're going to get up out of here. Um, I want to thank all my listeners uh, for tuning in. You could be anywhere else in the world, but you are here with me, and I appreciate that so, so much. Also, stay blessed and not stress. And treat others. Treat others as you would want to be treated. All right, until next episode. So, my listeners, peace. All right, let's get out of here. You got it. I don't know what's gonna happen.